Welcome back to D's and I hope you've been enjoying factoring. We're going to continue factoring trinomials today. Our goal is to learn the few special cases of simple trinomials and how to factor them. So our first special case, and this is an important one, is if there is a common factor when we're factoring those simple trinomials. So sometimes a simple trinomial can be disguised as a complex one by a common factor. And remember the difference between a simple trinomial and a complex trinomial is this number right here. Uh, if there's an a value, and in this case the a value is 3, then we consider this a complex trinomial. However, this is actually not a complex trinomial, it is a simple one in disguise. Okay, anyway, the disguise here is that there is uh, a common factor of 3. And so if we take out the common factor of 3, then there will be no term in front of the x squared. And so when I take out that common factor of 3, and remember when you take out a common factor, you divide each of the terms by it, we get x squared plus x minus 6. Let's see what this star says here. At first it looks complicated, but once you remove the common factor, it's really a simple trinomial to factor. So, um, it's actually a very simple trinomial to factor. Put down our two sets of brackets. X is at the start. Uh, we have to figure out what we know about the signs in these brackets. And this negative sign tells us that the signs must be different because I have to have integers of different signs to get a negative value. So, the signs have to be different. And now let's read it backwards. What multiplies to 6 and subtracts to 1? Well, what multiplies to 6 and subtracts to 1? There's only two things that multiply to 6. 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. And 2 and 3 are the ones that subtract to 1. And of course the middle term is positive, so I need more positives than negatives. So I have to put the bigger number with the positive. So that was actually quite simple. So even when we learn the methods of solving complex trinomials, which we will do in the next lesson, uh, you should always check for a common factor first before trying anything else. Taking out a common factor simplifies things. It makes numbers smaller. Okay. Oftentimes on tests I will write CFF, which means common factor first. This generally means that you could have made your life a lot easier by taking out a common factor. So let's have a look at the next special case. Here's special case number two. There are two variables. Oh no, this looks complicated. Let's see what this little arrow says. Looks scary, but really it isn't. The y squared on the third term, instead of having a simple constant, just means that while there are x's at the front of the two brackets, there will be y's at the back. So I'm going to write down my two sets of brackets. And I know I need an x here and an x here to get an x squared at the front. But now I know I need a y here and a y here to get a y squared at the back. And other than that, it's exactly the same. I take a look at this sign. That tells me that the two uh, numbers I'm looking for have to have the same sign. And then this sign here tells me that they must have both been plus. So I put a plus here and a plus here. And now let's read this backwards. We're looking two things that multiply to 36 and add to 12. Okay, well, 30, there's a lot of things that multiply to 36, but hopefully you guys uh, realize that 6 and 6 actually are the uh, ones that add to 12. And that makes that thing actually a completely perfect square, because remember our work when we expanded perfect squares? Uh, those brackets are exactly the same, so we have x plus 6y. So we can write it like that if we want to um, make it completely in um, simplified form. Now, special case number three is what happens if the question is backwards? Our x squareds are at the back instead of at the beginning. Okay. Again, don't panic. It's not worth panicking. Uh, probably the easiest thing to do is to switch it around. And if the squared term is positive, it's really easy switch because you just 
you just switch them around. I'm just going to take this x squared and put it out here and take this 36 and put it back here. So we actually get x squared minus 12x plus 36. And if that's what I have, when I factor it, I got to have x's at the beginning, put an equal sign out front. I know that the signs are the same, and I know they are both negative. So we put them in, and now they have to multiply to 36 and add to 12. There's our 6 and our 6 again. Okay. Now, this other one, a little bit more difficult because there's a negative in there. Okay, so if the x squared term is negative, the easiest thing to do uh, is swap it around. Negative x squared minus 15x uh, minus plus 16. Okay, just swap the two things around. But since our x squared term is negative, and notice all of these signs have to stay with the factors. This is a positive 16. It's a positive 16. Negative 15. Negative 15 stays a negative 15, and negative x squared stays negative x squared. Those things have to stay the same. Um, but we can take out a negative 1, and we get x squared plus 15x. That's 15x, and then minus 16. So that's probably the easiest thing to do. Just take out a negative 1, and of course, we usually just see a negative in front of brackets. And don't forget your equal sign so that you have proper form. Um, so now I'm going to put down my two sets of brackets. We get x's at the front. Now our two numbers have to multiply to 16 and subtract to 15. So the two numbers that multiply to 16 and subtract to 15 are 16 and 1. And, of course, this tells me that I had to have had more positives than negatives, so the 16 is positive and the 1 is negative. And I know you're going to be terribly disappointed because it's only been seven minutes, but we're done.